the Northwestern hazing scandal isn't over. In fact, it continues to develop throughout today, now involving the baseball team. A former player said the hazing occurred, this is football, in the team's locker room and Camp Kenosha. It was a practice called running where a player, usually a freshman, was restrained by as many as 10 other players, older players, who would then begin to, I'm going to redact that phrase, uh, the victim in a dark locker room. This according to the Daily Northwestern. Uh, the four student journalists who broke the story, the fallout so far, Coach Pat Fitzgerald was put on a two-week unpaid suspension by the university school president, but then indicated stronger action should have been taken. As Rick Morrissey wrote in the Sun-Times, giving Pat Fitzgerald a two-week unpaid you know, vacation now is like giving a hibernating bear a two-week suspension. It really doesn't much matter. State Rep Cam Buckner, who played defensive tackle in college for the University of Illinois, called the Northwestern Report disturbing and told Shia Kapos a playbook if the allegations are true, it amounts to much more than hazing, which in and of itself is bad enough. It amounts to sexual assault. Let's welcome State Rep Cam Buckner back to WDLS. Uh, hey, Mr. Representative, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, my friend. How are you? Hanging in and hanging on. Uh, as we've been talking about throughout the day and we played your cuts, hazing is illegal in the state of Illinois, classified a Class A misdemeanor unless it results in death or great bodily harm in which uh, then the case becomes a Class 4 felony. I want to get to the legislation in a moment, but what did you experience when you were playing defensive tackle in college for a U of I? Yeah, n- nothing like what the allegations in Evanston are, are today. Um, you know, uh, co- a college locker room is a, is a very peculiar place. Um, you got young men, especially in football, young men who are coming from different backgrounds, uh, different age, age groups. You got 17 to, to sometimes 24-year-olds. Um, depending on, you know, what a person's situation is. Um, but, I, you know, my experience was one where um, there was much more mentoring going on by some of the older guys to the younger guys. Uh, there were certain things that you have to do, like you, you, you buy uh, the, the older guys who are uh, in your meeting room or in the same position. You go buy them food or you, 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 um, you know, you carry their bags or their helmet or their pass, but never anything to the extent of what I'm hearing uh, in this, uh, these Northwestern allegations. How would you respond to people saying, oh, gosh, we're overreacting. This is more of the cancel culture. It's just boys being boys. It's been going on since the beginning of time. Well, I think this is a bridge too far. Um, you know, I, I've heard many people t- today actually take that stance uh, that this is just boys being boys. But um, the, the days of turning a blind eye to things like this uh, are, are, are long gone. Uh, and honestly, they should have not existed as long as they did, right? This, this is not okay. Uh, and, and what I'm also, you know, was also really important, I think, in this space, John, is that um, when I got to the University of Illinois in the, in the fall of 2003, 20 years ago this fall, um, Ron Turner, who was our coach at that point, uh, set everybody down and had a very stern talk uh, with the entire uh, program to say anything would never be tolerated in this program. Um, and now, you know, it, that's the type of accountability that, that has to exist in these programs. Um, we've, had, we've got to change the way that we're doing this, the normal business in college sports. So the bill that you're proposing amending here is somewhat based on a California bill. Describe to me what the College Athletics Bill of Rights would mean. Yeah, so this is something that I've worked on for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, initially I was doing this to, to solidify and, and codify um, some protection for college athletes uh, around uh, education, no attainment, um, degree attainment, and around um, economics, right? So we know that we just passed a bill two years ago that gave college athletes the right to have um, control of their name, image, and likeness, and the NCAA is attempting to roll some of that back now. So the Bill of Rights was supposed to protect that, also create some gender uh, equity uh, resources as well. Um, but when I think about this and I talk about uh, protecting student athletes, it can't just be economic and educational. It has to be complete, uh, and it has to also include giving them the opportunity to one not suffer from uh, allegations or, or you know practices like the allegations uh, in, Ev- in Evanston. Uh, but also, if these things ever happen, to have some recourse, to have a lane by which they can um, whistle blow uh, and, and protect themselves and their teammates. As uh, Rick Morrissey already mentioned in his column, I don't know if you read it, but he goes out of his way to say, look. This isn't Joe Paterno, Jerry Sandusky, and Penn State, but you would have thought Northwestern and even Fitzgerald himself 
would have learned from that awful chapter in college football history. Now, if coaches love to say it starts with me, does that mean, it, you know, Morrissey said it's time for Northwestern to uh, cashier Pat Fitzgerald? What do you think? Well, I think uh, the, whether or not that happens is going to be seen very shortly here. I think the, the university and the board of trustees are going to make a decision about how to move forward. I do think that the two-week uh, suspension in the middle of the offseason uh, is, is much to do about nothing, right? It's laughable. Uh, and, the, and the university should definitely take this much more seriously. I've said I said this this morning in, in the press conference, uh, John. But I, you know, I know Pat Fitzgerald. I, I have known him for, for 20 years, uh, and I know him to be an honorable man. Uh, but these allegations are extremely disturbing, and uh, the coach of the program does have to have to be accountable uh, in the long run. The, the buck has to stop with the head guy. Is it possible he wasn't aware of this? It's, it's very possible, um, uh, but that also would beg a question of. of what else needs to change in college, college athletics so uh, that if things like this are happening, untoward things are happening, uh, that the person in charge uh, can find out what's going on and find a way to fix them. Have you heard about the uh, continuing story regarding the Northwestern baseball team? I did not. I have not. Let me welcome uh, Kim Gordon in. She's our news anchor in the afternoons here. Uh, why don't you tell Representative Buckner a little bit about what the new turn of the story is? So, Representative Buckner, the Tribune released an uh, article uh, article earlier uh, this afternoon saying that the coach of the baseball team has been accused of bullying and that they there was an internal investigation as well of of the baseball coach oh, wow so, so it, I, I it's expanding as we go here it, yeah yeah and listen I think that this really speaks to um, the fact that and I've said this numerous times uh, we have to change the way college athletics works and it doesn't just need a facelift it needs a gut rehab um and it's very obsolete and antiquated and some of the things and practices and cultures that we've seen throughout college athletics um really don't have a place in, in today's society on a different subject while we have you on the phone i was down here for this deluge last weekend with a nascar race your thoughts on how it came off and whether or not the city should uh execute the remaining two years of that contract it was i was very clear for uh the last the better part of the last 12 months that i was not uh, a fan of the NASCAR idea that I was not happy about what was happening to that neighborhood that I represent and the people who live in that neighborhood. Uh, and I thought that the deal uh, was done in the darkness of night uh, without any real uh, accountability and transparency for the people of Chicago. Uh, with that being said, once it was clear that the race was going to move forward, uh, I hoped and wish and prayed that it was successful, that um, revenue uh, came to uh, uh, our restaurants and our hotels um, and I still haven't seen those numbers yet. Uh, and so I hope that uh, Mayor Johnson and his team uh, will be able to take a look at what the, the actual numbers are, what the data is, uh, to figure out whether or not we move forward with this. But, um, you know, we, we can't have uh, deals in Chicago uh, like this, like um, the parking meter deals where people uh, are left out of the conversation and we don't get a real true picture into what it does to the city and to, much, to, to years down the line. Uh, That's important for the way we operate in the city. Maybe the city, because NBC was so happy with the ratings, and if NBC's happy, NASCAR is happy, maybe it's time to essentially say, tear up the last two years, and we're going to renegotiate. We want you back, but you're going to have to sweeten the pot for us. I said this uh, in the beginning, $500,000 for pretty much 14 days of unfettered use of city property, of of, of Grand Park and our surrounding infrastructure, um, to me was not enough. Uh, if you look at that compared to the Lollapalooza deal, and not that the Lollapalooza deal is the holy grail, right? But if you look at the NASCAR deal in comparison to Lollapalooza, um, you know, we left a lot on the table uh, with this. And so uh, if there is a need for it to stay or for it to come back, uh, hopefully uh, the contract can look uh, uh, look better uh, for the people of Chicago because we got to make sure we're, we're, we're getting what we can uh, if we do continue things like this. State Rep. Cam Buckner, thanks for popping on. Much appreciated. We'll follow the story. Thank you. You guys have a great day.